welcome back out to our greenhouse here. We are going to be checking out some heating experiments behind me, the very beginnings of it. It's not going to be like a traditional video that I show the build or the beginning to end. This is just kind of an interactive. I'm looking to see advice or ideas from you guys, my subscribers. So you guys are going to play a part in building this or throwing me ideas so I can kind of think outside the box and possibly build something better than I was going to create alone. So if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. We're going to kind of walk around and we're going to go check out what we've got going on today. I already shed my sweatshirt here today and it is warmed up. I have the doors open now. We started very chilly this morning. It was only about 50 degrees, maybe 51 degrees here. And I ended up starting a fire out here, getting a nice fire going. That has basically completely burnt out now, here sitting at like 9.30 in the morning. So very early, it was cold, now it is warm. The sun is heating everything up. So we no longer need to keep the doors closed. The windows are starting to pop because it's 80 degrees in here. So it's so warm in here that we don't have much of a breeze. I can feel it down on the floor here, kind of blowing through, but we don't have much of a breeze this morning. So once I heated this greenhouse up to 80 degrees, the windows started opening. I basically just opened the doors and started working away this morning. Brewed myself some tea off this greenhouse stove. It is an absolute awesome thing to have in the greenhouse and it's going to be part of our heating our passive solar heating, some experimental active heating, just doing a lot of cool stuff for absolutely free or very cheap. So that's basically the theme on our channel is to do everything as cheap as possible. So today, this black drum, I had some old cans of spray paint and I ended up spray painting this down and sealing it up. There was a little bit of rust, so why not go with a black color to really double down on the factor of trying to heat. So if we don't have any fire burning to heat up the barrel in the sense that I want it to, we may have a sunny day that's going to heat up the barrel. Now this barrel is going to be full of water, like a normal thermal mass. Now we could have put sand in it and stuff like that. So sand takes a lot less energy to heat up, but water is going to hold that energy a lot longer and re-release it. So when the specific heats are compared, it's about four to five times that of sand with water. So water is the best thermal mass you can possibly have. Now having a pond in here, it's not as big as I would have liked it to been, but that's going to hold some thermal mass. So the moral of today's story is that we're going to be heating up our tank using this water pump we showed in our last video, the unboxing and testing of it. So we've got this 12 volt DC water pump that maybe pushes about 50 watts. It uses or consumes 50 watts per hour. So based off of that, we can piggyback it on some type of fan system that probably uses 12 to 20. So we give a little gap for any spikes. And on cloudy days, we won't have as much energy. So we want to kind of sparingly build our systems to use up that 100 watts, but to not actually use the entire thing. So we just set the camera up onto our tank. Now we've got this pump going right in. I am so glad I was able to pick this tank up. This 55 gallon drum, it had like soybean oil or canola oil or something like that. Something natural where I wasn't gonna poison soil or poison water. So I ended up washing it out with some dish soap and stuff, cleaning that up. So. Now we're able to use this to hold water and to heat water. So with this pump, we will be able to recirculate water back and forth between our stove. And I want to be able to use or incorporate this little uh, heat exchanger back here. I'd like to be able to use this heat exchanger possibly on the top of this drum before it dumps back in. So we're gonna pull a little bit of heat to the air and possibly blow it into a tunnel we have tunnels that go down this whole side of the greenhouse for growing all winter. So this is just kind of a look behind the scenes here of what I'm building and how I'm getting it going and my thoughts behind it before I actually build anything because I'd like to see some ideas and hear from you guys before I get going. Now I've got this small little radiator system. I had an old coiled up piece of copper and I took that coiled up piece of copper I still have some fittings. My son stuck his gum in there. So I had taken this old piece of coiled up copper that had kinks and stuff 
and I was able to rebend it out with a little hand tool, a nice cheap little tubing bender that you can use with your hands. So I ended up fixing up that piece and just basically brainstorming with it. So this is basically a small radiator and it connects out and I was experimenting with running it up behind our stove or along the back wall of our stove in between the actual chimney chute or the exit pipe and the bricks that are behind it. So I'm trying to figure out whether I want this down by the belly of the stove itself or up around the exhaust pipe because it's a pain to get the exhaust pipe off and coil one all the way around it. So I was thinking if I have something I can slide in and out because this system isn't going to run all the time but this is going to be for those very very cold nights when I need to crank a bunch of heat and thermal mass. I can just heat that tank up and then leave that overnight to really heat the greenhouse. While we're over at our pond here, if anybody has any ideas for keeping this better insulated through the winter, we're going to try and keep this warm with some compost heating. We're gonna take our blue packs and that's just one idea. We haven't really figured out exactly what we're gonna do yet to keep this warm enough. Without using any electricity, we plug into the wall. We may use some solar powered heaters. We've got a ton of little experiments that we're gonna be doing with heating and solar power. So, so I'm excited to see what we end up bringing forward to show you guys. I know I want to put some type of cover over this, but we're not there yet, so that will be for a later video. So the whole reason I wanted to share my little brainstorm on my copper tubing, my own DIY little radiator, I've got a bunch of recycled pieces that I might be able to use in place of that and just run lines to and be able to pull heat off a lot easier. And here's where you guys come into this. As subscribers, you can comment or give suggestions, ideas, and I will get right back to you. We have an absolute ton of comments to go through from this summer and while we were on vacation and stuff. So don't feel bad if we haven't got back to your comment yet. I promise we will. We are very, very busy in the summertime with our farmer's market, planting crops and everything like that. It's very, very busy in the summer. So as things wind down here with our market, we're trying to ramp up our heating experiments and get going early. We're sitting right in the middle of September right now when we're going to start doing all of these heating experiments. So it is getting colder at night and that chill in the air this morning reminded me of it. So I thought I would come out, do some work, and show you guys what I have for one idea. Real quick before I let everybody go or before you get to those comments, I want to share this. We showed this in the last video. Now this is a simple little 12 volt inline DC fan and this will push 130 cubic feet per minute which is phenomenal. I wish I could have one of these on my geothermal. I wish I could have one in place of all the other fans just for its potency but it does use more electricity. It uses like 30 to 40 watts something like that don't quote me but I want to say 30 to 35 watts when those use 10 to 12 watts at the most to operate. So it uses almost double because it is double the size and it moves one and a half times the volume of those fans. We did hook our geothermal back up if you can hear that running pulsing on and off as the solar panels are in the shade still. But we got that operating. We didn't want to run it in the summertime to create moisture down there and clog up our pipes. So we don't run it in the summer unless the doors are closed and we're trying to keep things cooler for some reason to start plants or whatever. But we usually do not keep our geothermal on in the summer because it's just pulling that warm air down, condensing the moisture from it, and then shooting it back out cooler. But all that moisture staying down in the ground in your tube. Found over the last few years that we just want to leave it off in the summer. We just kicked it back on and it's running perfectly. Last fall we had a ton of water in it. So we are learning and trying to share those findings. So back to the next experiment. If you guys want to comment any ideas on this. So I've just got some eight foot dryer ducting aluminum. Um, fireproof but that thing's not going to be anywhere near the fire it's just going to be pulling heat so you're going to be connecting these two together up underneath the bench to also pull heat i'm going to create some type of heat wall that i can pull the heat through whether it's bricks or whether it's a piece of metal or something so if you got any ideas on that because this might run right into a tunnel also so we can have tons of heating sources along with our compost heating which we're going to be getting going on here very soon also so if anybody's got any ideas drop those in the comments like i said this is kind of a behind the scenes look i'm just working today and just 
doing a few things, experimenting, and getting some measurements so I can get some copper and figure out how I want to actually run this and operate this little system. So any questions, comments, ideas, or concerns, definitely drop those in the comments below, and I appreciate everybody watching this video. And I'd like to give a huge thank you and shout out to my subscribers, and I will see you guys next time.